Welcome to this tutorial about maxillary and mandibular anatomy on CBCT and I'm also going to include some other structures, facial and cervical structures for example, uh, as they are always important as well. Here we have the axial slices, so the raw images of the CBCT and they are daikon files, okay? So from these images, the software, the algorithm of the software will reconstruct the other planes, okay? And that's exactly what we are going to do now. Here we have this uh, CBCT reference planes on top of myself, so axial, sagittal and coronal, the three orthogonal planes, and then the transaxial, parasagittal, that's also one of the most common names on the scientific articles, parasagittal, or even, uh, you know, you can just call this cross-sectional images of the alveolar ridge, as they are true cross-sectional images of the dental arch or the alveolar ridge. So without further ado, let's start uh, to analyze the Excel images here. I am using Horus uh, software for Apple computers, for, for Mac OS, but you could use for Windows computers, for example, you know, uh, uh, Invesalius, the Brazilian software, or Dolphin, there are other softwares for Windows computers as well, which are Daikon viewers, okay? So we should use Daikon viewers. Here we have a Horus, as I always used uh, Horus and Osirix MD, so the softwares of, of Apple. So let's start with the uh, mandible. I'm going to go, uh, again, just like the other video, from bottom to top of the scan. And here I have the Excel slices. If you guys don't remember how to navigate through CBCT, uh, please go back to my uh, tutorial of CBCT. I will add the link here on the top right of this screen and you guys can always check this tutorial, you know, uh, as much as you want. Okay, so let's start with the uh, base of the mandible. So I have the cortical of the base of the mandible and I'm just going to go quickly through the, you know, the structures on the axial slice and then of course I will reconstruct the other planes. So now I have the trabecular bone of the patient. I am seeing now a radiolucent or hypodense because that's 3D, okay, this area. So we need to check about this area. The trabecular pattern of the posterior mandible will be usually a little bit more radiolucent than the anterior mandible. So that's uh, standard. So uh, th this is normal anatomy. And then we have here the mandibular canal, okay? We don't see nerves on the radiographs, we see the mandibular canal, and then mental foramen, okay? So eventually we are going to see the mandibular canal and the mental foramen on both sides, even though we can see uh, them in different uh, slices. So left and right mental for foramen in different slices. Sometimes it happens. I have here cervical structures already, the vertebra, but okay, let's keep going. And then I have the level of the roots, of course, right? So the level of the roots is here. The shape of the posterior mandible and the ramus we are starting to see. Now I have here the roots of the third molar. And then let's keep going. All right, we are going to see all these structures. Uh, then this would be the contour of the tongue of the patient. All right, so we are seeing the contour of the tongue. And now the airspace, because we have here the maxilla. That's the level of the maxilla and then this is the ramus of the mandible. So standard stuff here. I am seeing all the roots of the maxilla. And then I start to see intermaxillary suture and the nasopalatine canal. The name of the foramen is incisive foramen, but you guys know that I'm talking about the foramen leading to the nasopalatine canal, where we have the nasopalatine nerve, the one that goes for palatal soft tissues of the anterior maxilla. Let's keep going. We are seeing now uh, the, uh, after the tuberosity of the maxilla, we are seeing, take a look at this, the lateral plate of the pterygoid process and the medial plate of the pterygoid process. The pterygoid process belongs to the sphenoid bone and the medial plate is the one that has the hook-shaped structure, which is the pterygoid hamulus. So let's keep going uh, upwards. We are seeing now the, the maxillary sinus, okay, the nasal cavity as well, the nasal concha. And here I'm already seeing uh, some hyperdensities in the maxillary sinus, right? So sinus opacification. But of course, we are going to, again, to check this in, uh, in the other planes as well. So let's keep going. We are seeing now the, you know, the extension of the maxillary sinus, now the zygomatic bone, all right? So zygomatic bone, I start to see zygomatic bone and the zygomatic arch eventually. Take a look at this, the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus is basically the contour of the pterygopalatine fossa, okay? So you have here the pterygopalatine fossa, where we have the maxillary nerve giving branches, okay, for the zygomatic nerve and for the posterior superior alveolar nerve as well. 
So uh, now the, the scan is, is finishing, but let's take advantage of this to see also some mandibular structures. We are seeing the ramus and then the condyle neck here and here. All right, so both condyle necks are here and here. And even the external acoustic meters, we can see a little bit because the scan is actually finished in the field of view, the mastoid cells and a little bit of the uh, uh, styloid process. Okay, so the styloid process here and here, just in the end of the scan, all right? But okay, let's see the, the, in the other planes now. Uh, now I'm going to, I'm clicking here on 3D viewer and I am, of course, opening the 3D MPR, okay? So the multiplanar reconstruction as we should always do. Basically, this will be the same for every Dicom viewer uh, software program. Now I can see maxillary and mandible on the three orthogonal planes, sagittal on the top left, axial on the bottom left, and then on the right side, I have here the coronal plane. I can compare both maxillary sinus, for example, so it's a very useful uh, plane. So uh, let's start, let's see the structures again. So the base of the mandible, I'm seeing now you know, on the three orthogonal planes. And how to do that? Well, I basically drag the axis of the other planes. I choose one of them and I drag the axis to the same structure that I want to assess. And I need to make them parallel to the structure. So let's uh, see how we do that for the bone. You guys will understand. So here, let's, let's say for the anterior mandible, I want to assess the symphysis and the lingual foramen is here, for example, and then I can tilt my axis all right, to be parallel to the bone, for example. Now I can see the bone and even the roots here on my coronal plane. So, of course, the planes are now tilted. And let's, um, okay, so that those would be, you know, the region of the symphysis here. And I am assessing on the three planes at the same time. Take a look at this, the soft tissue contours. We can see the contours at least. So the tongue of the patient, the lower lip. All right, and then let's uh, move move on to the posterior mandible. So now, take a look at this. I am now uh, tilting the, the, the planes in order to have a, which could work as a coronal panoramic plane now, okay, but it's just the orthogonal planes tilted, right? And then I have this one being now a cross-sectional image of my alveolar uh, ridge. So I am now uh, giving a zoom to assess each tooth, for example. So here I am assessing the four, so I'm assessing the premolar, right? And then if I want to assess this premolar, of course, I put all the axes parallel to this premolar. So I am putting the axis parallel or and the axial perpendicular, of course, to the premolar. And then I am seeing now, okay, all the relationship between the premolar and the bone. So let's move forward. So now I have here the, the five and then I can see the lesion. Okay, so I can see the lesion, all right? And then I am here, all right, so the lesion is below the level of the mandibular canal. This is a cavity, and I want you guys to try to answer the diagnosis of this lesion, okay? So this will be the quiz of today. Try to, uh, you know, it's a classic lesion, okay? It's not a true cyst. I'm going to give you guys this hint, and please give your answers in the comments. What is this lesion here? So again, it's not a true cyst, but now you need to assess the lesion in 3D, right? So what I need to do, I drag up my axis to the lesion, okay? And now I'm seeing the lateral medial extension of the lesion, the anterior posterior extension of the lesion, okay? I can do measurements, of course, all right? So I can do not only linear measurements like this, for example, I can do, you know, area and even volumetric measurements in, uh, in 3D, okay, in cubic millimeters, for example, right? With a Dicon viewer, you could do that. So the cortical, uh, which is the limit of the lesion, all right, very good. But let's uh, continue the anatomy of the patient. So we are seeing now the posterior body of the mandible. And uh, let's see the external oblique ridge is here, all right. And then the external oblique ridge. And for example, if I want to assess the conditions for this third molar, okay, second and third molar, I have here the second molar and then the third molar, all right. And then the third molar with proximity to the mandibular canal. Take a look at this, all right. And here you check the proximity between the roots and take a look at the shape of these roots, okay, dilaceration, we have the curve of the roots. And then the relationship in 3D now, even, you know, I know that's not buccal or lingual to the mandibular canal, I am seeing the proximity between the root and the mandibular canal. 
So we can continue here, all right? And then I am making the planes again parallel to see the external oblique ridge. Okay, so the external oblique ridge is here. All right, I can continue to see the mandibular canal and even the mandibular foramen, okay? So the opening of the mandibular canal where the inferior alveolar nerve enters in this canal. Very good. So then uh, if I move, if I keep going, I will even assess the ramus of the mandible. So I'm making all the planes parallel to the ramus of the mandible. So mandibular angle is visible now. All right. The, the condyle, the area of the condyle that, that you know, it's, it's still reachable in this scan. And even coronoid process, which is here. Okay. So it's a little bit more anterior. All right. This would be the coronoid process. Very good. Now let me uh, reset everything that I was doing because I am I'm going to show to you guys the maxillary structures. So let's go for the main maxillary structures now. I have here the anterior region and of course the nasopalatine canal will be between the central incisors, right? So now you guys are seeing the uh, nasopalatine canal, all right? And then I am moving my axis together okay, to see the roots, okay, so you could do any type of assessment here of the roots. Here I have nasal cavity and nasal concha, and then I am moving, let's go to this side, so the right side of the patient, okay, you always can check the side here in the axial plane, so that's the right side of the patient, because it's in the left side of my screen, okay, and then I will tilt the axis, okay, so now it's, the sides are all correct, Okay, and then I have the radial opacity, okay, so the hyperdensity of the sinus, okay, suggestive of sinus membrane thickening, all right, so an area of sinus membrane thickening, okay, it's not uh, still, uh, at least uh, it, it looks like we are almost having a dome-shaped lesion, so this could be the beginning of an enter enteral pseudocyst, but of course uh, this could be inflammatory uh, sinus membrane thickening, right, so you would assess the relationship of this area with the roots, okay, just like I'm doing here, okay, and I, I can even make the axis even more parallel to the teeth, okay, to see how is this relationship. All right, then second and third molars here, and then I have, of course, the tuberosity of the maxilla, okay, so now I'm locating the tuberosity of the maxilla, and after the tuberosity of, of the maxilla, of course, the pterygoid process, right? So maxillary sinus is here, I can see in the three planes as well, and then the pterygoid process, right? So lateral plate and medial plate, just like we saw in the in the axial raw images, okay, in the axial slices. And then let's go for the uh, anterior region again, all right? So I am seeing on the other side now, okay, K9. I can even check the shape of the anterior nasal spine, all right? So if I want to check properly, the shape of the anterior nasal spine, I make all the axes parallel again, and then I will find the anterior nasal spine, okay, I'll give you guys a zoom for you guys to see, all right, so uh, close to the sagittal midline of the patient, of course, okay, now the, uh, here I ha we have, of course, the other side, okay, I'm just correcting the orientation of the axis to have the correct sides on, on all the planes, okay, and then you would see all the relationship between, for example, third molar and maxillary sinus, all right, and the structures of the other side as well, okay? So those are the main structures. We, of course, you, if you drag those, those areas, uh, cervical areas should not be included on the scan because we don't use them, you know, in the, in the routine. But if you have, then you can also recognize the cervical structures as I was showing previously. All right, guys, uh, before we finish, let's show the, the 3D reconstructed image of this case. You can always render a 3D reconstructed image, okay? And let me show myself here again. All right, so now we have here the image, and this is the 3D reconstructed image, okay, of the case. We can edit this image, okay? It's not that we are lacking bone here, okay? Because you are not seeing the bone here, you are seeing the roots because of the threshold, okay? So, again, this is also information contained in the lecture of CBCT, in the tutorial of CBCT, okay, of the methods, all right? So, mental foramen, coronoid process, mandibular notch, condyle, okay, of the mandible, external oblique ridge, right? Uh, the beginning of the zygomatic bone, in the tuberosity of the maxilla, and all the structures that you guys were seeing with me, okay? Lateral plate of the pterygoid process, 
medial plate of the pterygoid process, hard pellets, and then you could do the complete assessment of the patient. All right? So if you guys like, please hit the like button. Feel free to share this video and see you guys on the next videos.